If you're a fan of the punishing cruelty of the Dark Souls type games, have I got the game for you. Oh shoot, there's a whole bunch more people this time. Get out of the way. And yes, you will die over and over and over again. Grimlord is a Souls style VR game that's launched in early access on Steam and a free demo on Quest App Lab, and they are bringing the full game to Quest as well. What you're seeing here obviously is the PC VR game. I'll be candid with you, I actually started the game all over again because as you're seeing here, the first whole package of all the footage I had looked like I was a bobblehead. So I went back and started over again, although I've gotta make some adjustments because for some reason I had the setting for recording both eyes, so it looks a little weird, but it looks a lot more steady. All right, back to Grimlord. So Grimlord is, like I said, a Souls-style VR game. You start off in a dungeon, pretty naked, actually, and you have to fight your way through this tutorial to get out of there and get to what's considered the town, which is where you'll meet your cast of characters, fully voiced, well done to characters in this town that'll send you on your mission in to die pretty much continuously. Once you make it through the tutorial area, and there is a boss battle in the tutorial area, which I died a lot on more than I care to admit, and finally just decided, you know what, screw this, I'm gonna run away and see if I can just skip the boss battle, and it worked. Once you get to the town, which is like the main menu area, there'll be a few different people to talk to. I really like the feel and the style of the visuals in this game. It does feel a lot like a Dark Souls game, both visually and with the artistic style. But this main hub is actually more involved than I expected it to be. From having a blacksmith that you can collect pieces of weapons to build as you're going through this game. When you come back to the blacksmith, you can pick different items from the carousel, essentially, to put new swords and axes and other types of weapons together. You'll actually get quests from most of the people inside of this main town area that you are going to try to do as you fight through these enemies. There's also a few different types of armor. I opted for the most heavy armor that I possibly could because, um, yeah, I knew I was going to die a lot, and I figured it might help. So you use these crystals to rest or to teleport to the location where you're headed to. And you're going to jump in and just start fighting right away. There are several different enemy types with different types of combat styles. Each enemy that has a different weapon actually fights differently, and you have to kind of understand how they hack and slash and their combos in order to defeat them. A lot of them have armor, you have to take their helmet off or their shield off or hit them in the right spot to actually dispatch them. Now when I first started off this game, I was of the persuasion that the hacking and slashing and blocking was the way to play. But I found personally, my gameplay style turned to what I call the Dory gameplay style. And what I mean by that is the just keep stabbing gameplay style. I wasn't great at hacking and slashing, but I found that if I could stab them in the right place and knock them down, I could just keep stabbing. Just keep stabbing, just keep stabbing. You'll collect different potions and items as you find chests and you defeat enemies as you play. You'll have to keep an eye on your right arm because that's where your health is. So if that red bar gets empty, then you're in trouble. Even just defeating the basic enemy takes effort. Like, it actually makes you physically tired to play this game. Unlike in a Dark Souls game where you're gonna sit on your couch and just play it, you're actually having to hack and slash and dodge and move around to defeat these enemies. Speaking of dodging, there's actually a button that allows you to dodge back or to the side to get out of the way of enemies, which I really appreciated, especially when a enemy was trying to slash me with an axe or something, I could jump backwards. There's also a jump button allowing you to, to jump over things and, and, you know, just kind of leap into the air and poke them. And with enemies around every corner, seemingly more enemies as you play consistently, then you'll always be on your toes. Several times, enemies snuck up on me and gave me a heart attack. Oh, she's some crow! Looks like I'm gonna die faster this time than I did last time. Which I'm pretty jumpy, but I'm pretty sure that'll happen to you too if you play this game. Just because there's so many enemies around and you'll be fighting two enemies and have two show up right behind you. I am awful at the bow and arrow, so I consistently just kind of ran and, and tried not to shoot people with a bow and arrow. Not that the bow and arrow mechanics are bad, they're pretty good, actually. i am just always been not great at shooting a bow and arrow. The game really doesn't hold your hand. It gives you a basic tutorial at the beginning, and then just kind of sends you off and says, do your own thing, fight your own fight, find what you're gonna find, and keep dying as many times as you can until you figure out what you're supposed to do, which I actually kind of appreciate. The tutorial goes into what you're supposed to do as far as the interactions the VR uses. And then beyond that, it's just like, 
Get out there and die to figure out what you're supposed to do and where you're supposed to go. What gates you're supposed to open, how you're supposed to open them, what enemies you're supposed to fight. As you're fighting and you fight these enemies, you are going to earn souls. Although they're not really called souls in this, they're actually called matter. And you'll earn the matter as you dispatch the enemies and work your way through these levels, and then you'll lose it. All, if you die. Unless you go back to the town and you offload your matter. Which sounds weird, but cash them in maybe it's the right thing. I don't know. But that's what you gotta do, because you'll just keep losing them and you gotta go find the matter, you know, the spot where you died, all the way through to the end of the level if you were right at the very end or at a boss battle. Yeah, that, 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 that's what happens. As someone that has not really played a lot of the Dark Souls games, I went into this expecting it to be obscenely hard in a bad way. And it is hard, don't get me wrong. But instead of getting frustrated every time I died, I felt more like I wanted to try again. Like I wanted to dive deeper into the game. I wanted to fight from where I last left off and find myself, not like internally, I, I mean literally find myself in the game, and just keep fighting and keep, keep doing better and upgrading and, and just getting better in the game. I think that that shows a lot of potential for a, a good gameplay loop when that happens, especially for someone that's not really a fan of this type of game most of the time. I've tried some of the Dark Souls and Dark Souls style games, and they always frustrate me. Always. To the point of, like, just giving up. But this game, I could see myself spending a lot of time in because it just pulls you in. And yes, it is extremely hard, and, and they could pare back the difficulty level some to make it a little more accessible. You're gonna have to spend dozens of hours, probably, on this to really get through anywhere near what you need to do. And I know they're tweaking a lot of it, and it's still early access, so they've got a lot of work to put into it. And the developers told me that they've got a lot they're putting into it, a lot of work to do to make it, you know, balance it, and, and just to make it perfect and better. And when it comes to Quest, I'm sure it'll be balanced, and it'll be a full launch. So it'll be fun to see what people think of it when it comes to Quest, and, and visually what it looks like as a full game. The demo looks pretty good. The sword combat in the game feels pretty good. It's not perfect. It's got some, you know, glitchy stuff here where you've got physics-based kind of combat like this where you're trying to interact with elements with your arms and your sword. You're going to run into problems, some jank and stuff like that. But, you know, in all honesty, I was so busy not trying not to die that I didn't really notice all that much. So Grimlord, yeah, it's Dark Souls in VR, or it might as well be. And it's hard and it's fun, and you can check it out at the link in the description. Let me know what you think of this game, what your thoughts are on whether this is your type of game or not. Are you a Dark Souls fan? Are you someone that's going to give up after a few times of trying? Are you, are you one of those people that just never gives up? Let me know what you think down below. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe, and happy questing.